Hello and welcome to this English class. Today, we are going to discuss a very important topic, which is reading comprehension skill. This is the second part of reading 2A. Students book, page 22 and 23. As usual, at the debut of every lesson, we have to discuss the lesson's objectives. The objective number one is to discern the content of four different texts. The verb discern means to recognize or to distinguish the content of these texts. Number two, it's to identify the meaning of seven words. At the beginning, allow me to ask you a few questions to refresh your mind and make sure that you still remember some of the information that you acquired, that you obtained in the previous lesson. Do you still remember what were the types of the texts that you had in the previous lesson? Take a moment to think about this. In fact, in reading 2a part 1, we had four texts. Text A was a blog. Text B was an article. Text C was a flyer. And text D was a letter. As you remember, Text A is a blog in which Elliot Inkber posted some of his personal experiences about study choices. When Elliot visited Bay College of Design, he felt unconfident. Why? Good. When he saw the awesome and fabulous work of Bay College students, he thought it would be difficult for him to do something that good. In the article named Nurtured by Nature, which means developed or succeeded by nature, why did Scandinavian countries adopt the experiential learning in nature? In fact, these Scandinavian countries value building confident and independent-minded students. They believed nature is the ideal setting for education. In the flyer about Eagle Wing Aviation School, what are the additional courses there? Well, the additional courses covered two important parts of basic aircraft engineering. They are how to maintain and repair light aircraft. According to the letter written by Mr. Alex K. Baxter, the study abroad coordinator, to Mr. Phillips, who showed his interest in studying in the Blue Ridge School, what subjects do students study abroad? In fact, all grade 12 students would spend one semester living and studying in another country. They will study the same conventional subjects as at home. In the coming activity, we are going to find out which text provides which information through a matching exercise. Here are some useful tips to remember whenever you have a similar activity. Let's have a look together at the tip box. When matching questions with short texts, please keep in mind to scan each text and look for the specific information referred to in each question. Try to find the part of the text which correctly answers the question. Do not choose a text just because the vocabulary or phrasing in the text is similar to that of the question.
In exercise C, page 23, I would like you to read the four texts. And for questions 1 to 8, choose from texts A to D. Please notice that you should choose one text for each of the questions 1 to 5 and two texts for each of the questions 6 to 8. Do not forget to go back to the tips that we discussed in the previous slide. Stop the video if you need more time to do the task. Please remember that you need to be fully concentrated while reading a text to answer the questions correctly. As you can see, we will start with questions 1 to 5. Now let's check our answers. Number 1. Which text points out specific entry requirements for a course? The word requirement means something which is needed or something which is demanded. It is text C. Very good. Students who wish to fly with the Eagle Wing Aviation School should pass mathematics and physics tests. They should also have a medical certificate that shows they are in a good health. Number two, discusses more than one educational institution. It is text B. Take a look at the statement in text B from line five to line nine. Number three, indicates that something needs to be sent soon. Text D, very good. If you are interested in applying, it is crucial, it is very important. You submit your application before the end of this month. The due date is before the end of this month. Number four, addresses a specific person. Text D. In text D, the target people are grade 12 students. Number five, shares parts of a conversation the author had. Text A, very good. In text A, when Elliot Ingber visited Bay College of Design, he met some students there. He said, I spoke with some students and they told me they felt the same on first visiting the college. Let's answer the questions from 6 to 8. Which texts discuss courses only for people over 18 years of age? Here, we are talking about people who graduated and finished their secondary school. The two texts are text A and text C. Excellent. In text A, Elliot Engber said, Well, I've been putting things off again. I was meant to start applying for colleges yesterday. In text C, the statement that justifies the answer is, have you just finished college or university? Number seven, the texts that mention courses involving food are text B and text D. Perfect. In text B, students who study in nature should know how to build shelters and search for edible plants. Edible plants are plants that are suitable and safe for eating. In text D, students should identify poisonous mushrooms. Poisonous mushrooms are not suitable for eating. They are dangerous mushrooms. Number eight, include opinions other than the authors. 
text A and text B. Excellent. The opinion in text A is the one of the students whom Elliot Ingber met at Bay College. The opinion in text B is the one of the educators who believe it is time to make experiential learning in nature a primary means of instruction. My dear students, have you ever been reading and you come across with words for which you don't know their meanings? One strategy you can use to help you determine the meaning of new words is to look at the words in the sentence. This is called context clues. In exercise D, page 23, we will look at the highlighted words in the four texts and match them with their meanings. Notice that there is one extra meaning. Please stop the video and have some time to do the task. Let's start with the word intimidated. This is not a common word and may be unfamiliar to you. Now let's look at the same word in the context of a sentence. In text A, line 5, Elliot Ingber said, I felt intimidated when I saw their work. Anyone who can draw like that must be remarkably gifted. I'd struggle to do something that good. We can now get a better idea what the word intimidated means. Words like work, draw, remarkably gifted and struggle help us understand that the word intimidated means E. Excellent. Feeling scared or nervous and not being confident in a particular situation. Number two, edible. The word edible comes in text B in paragraph 3. Edible plants. These plants are suitable and safe for eating. So the word edible means D. Very good. Suitable or safe for eating. Number 3. Excel. G. Excellent. To be extremely good at doing something. Number four. Curriculum. Perfect. It is B. The subjects that are taught in a school. Number five. Conventional. A. Well done. Considered ordinary, standard or traditional conventional education. Number six, fascinating. H, very interesting. Good. The last one, crucial. C, excellent, extremely important. Vocabulary knowledge varies greatly among learners. The more you practice, the more you acquire new words. So it is better to incorporate, to include those words into your speaking and writing. Bay College, Forest Schools, Aviation School, Blue Ridge School, all these are four different institutions which would offer better opportunities for students to learn. Which one of these educational institutions would you like to attend and why? Please stop the video and think about this question. One student showed his or her interest in attending one of these institutions. He or she said, I'd like to attend Bay College of Design because I'm interested in pursuing a career in graphic design. 
So I think that this school will provide me with some very important knowledge and skills. I also like the fact that the level of studies is very demanding as this will increase both my motivation and my will to succeed. It is obvious that this student is highly interested in undertaking courses of graphic design in Bay College. I suppose that this student among many of you would accept the challenging level of studies. This reflects his or her determination to succeed as well as his or her strong personality and qualities. The will to succeed refers us to one of the sayings at the opening of this module. Thirst for knowledge. No two things have been combined better than knowledge and patience. Do you have any idea who said this saying? Good. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that. Prophet Muhammad attached so much importance to knowledge that he considered its acquisition to be among the superior acts of a Muslim. It is knowledge that opens up the path of prosperity and perfection for mankind. To acquire knowledge, we need some intellectual virtues. The intellectual virtues are good manners and good habits of the mind that enable it to be a more efficient instrument of knowledge. According to you, what are the intellectual virtues needed for the acquisition of knowledge? Take some time to think about this question. Number one, patience. As you know, knowledge is built over time, so we have to be patient in order to learn. Number two, perseverance. It is the continued effort that we do when we achieve and learn something. Number three, diligence. We have to be careful and sincere when we acquire knowledge. This is the end of our lesson. By now, dear students, I expect you to discern the content of different texts and identify the meaning of different words. This video will always be available on Microsoft Teams for you to watch at any time. Thanks for watching.